Greetings, this is August 10th and I wanted to take a quick look at some new infrared that's come in and it's displaying between Killini and Westside near the Bulo Lake Park. This is data that's come in since 12.30 a.m. on NASA's firm's system, both in the MODIS that comes in about 12.30 and then the later update on the VIIRS. There does appear to be fewer infrared on display, but we'll do a comparison between yesterday and today. So this is the White Rock Lake fire. We are looking at uh, the region that extends from Monty Lake down to west side on Okanagan Lake and this is yesterday and now today. There are fewer infrared on display this morning. That could increase as the day heats up, winds come in, but let's zoom in. This is the west side area. We're looking at infrared from yesterday and now today. We can see expansion eastwards on top of the hillside and it appears to have come down towards the lake. We can zoom in closer. So these are four VIIRS hotspots. They are 375 meters across and they appear to have moved eastward of the northwest side road. Uh, keep in mind that these Hotspots can be out of position. Uh, they can also be obscured by smoke and clouds. So we may not be seeing exactly where they are and we may not be seeing all the data possible. We've jumped a few kilometers northwards. Uh, I believe this is the Nas Widow Creek area and this is another extension from yesterday and now we're rolling into today. Definitely a reduction in the amount of infrared visible. Uh, I'm not seeing any movement outside the existing perimeter yesterday, and it does appear that that infrared is still within that creek area. We've moved now to the northwest flank of the fire. We can see Monty Lake at the upper left-hand portion of the screen, and we see the cluster around Ingram Creek on the lower uh, right hand portion of the screen closer to Falkland. We are looking at infrared from yesterday and now today. There are fewer infrared in the lower right hand portion of the screen visible this morning. Uh, there are three hotspots to the west of Monty Lake on the western side of that forested block. Also north of Paxton Valley, uh, northeast of Highway 97, there's a spot popping up there. So while there is a reduction in the overall infrared visible, there has been eastward movement on the southeast flank of this fire, and uh, there are potential for strong western winds to come in today in the afternoon, and those should continue uh, for the next couple days. We'll take a look at that forecast, but first I just want to quickly jump over to the Tremont Creek area. We've been watching some northward expansion onto the mountains south of Savannah, and this is yesterday and now today. That cluster has grown. Uh, it appears to be pretty much right on the mountaintop. There is a VIIRS indication uh, moving northward. Those are MODIS 750 meter squares and VIIRS 375 meter squares, so it's uh, useful to gauge distance. It looks like approximately two kilometers to the northern edge of that forested block and then another three kilometers to the highway. Taking a look further south, this is the Lytton Fire at the top of the screen. We're looking at that southeast flank south of Spence's Bridge. Uh, very few hotspots indicated there. And a little bit further south is the Coquihalla Highway. This is uh, around the Brookmere area between Merritt and Hope and uh, there are fewer infrared being displayed there. There has been cloud cover, so we may not be seeing all the data. I didn't see infrared around Manning Park at this time, but we'll move eastward. Uh, this is east of Oliver and Osuius, up on the hillside, uh, the Okanagan Plateau at the top of the screen. We are seeing fewer infrared today. 
there are two spots visible and they appear to be straddling that uh, vertical infrastructure line uh, running north-south, approximately 10 kilometers east of Oliver. The rest of the province looked reasonably clear. Uh, let's take a look at Windy. Uh, this is in the Tremont Creek Fire area, just south of Savannah Lake. Uh, three kilometers an hour coming from the southwest and if we jump over to the White Rock Lake fire zone uh, We're looking at winds coming from the west six kilometers an hour and they may increase this afternoon We can see here. There's this fanning approach coming from the lower left hand side of the screen up to the center That's the wind coming up these valleys and they fan out a portion of the wind goes north a portion of the wind goes east Afternoons may see a bit of a shift and start uh, rolling in more from the west and the northwest with stronger gusts. By 2 p.m. there could be gusts as strong as 54 kilometers an hour coming from the northwest. That will continue for the next two days uh, from the west, from the northwest, stronger gusts in the afternoon but uh, winds don't appear to abate much during the evening it's just going to be windy and breezy there's no precipitation in this short-term forecast and temperatures could rise to 32 degrees by saturday we're looking at uh, 30 degrees in the afternoon on friday Thank you very much for watching. This was a brief update just to show you some expansion eastwards toward Okanagan Lake between Westside and Killini Beach. And it does appear that these heat detections have moved across the highway or very near to it. We are anticipating increased wind gusts this afternoon and pretty much for the rest of the week. So if you are east, uh, northeast or southeast of these fire zones, uh, please have a plan in place. Uh, know where the fire line is. Know what the vegetation and terrain is between you and the fire line and what your access routes are. Also, please check with the resource links below and get the most recent uh, ground report available. Be safe and keep your nose to the breeze.